This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Welcome to Hawaii, the state of clean energy, our Energy Wednesday show. I'm Maria Tome, co-hosting with Mitch Ewan from the University of Hawaii. And we have a special guest today, Dennis Furukawa with Hawaii Green Power. So welcome, and um, I think Mitch, you can kick us off with a little description of what we're in yeah, for today. Yeah, I'd like to do that. Um, one of the things I wanted to do when I invited uh, Dennis here was to highlight the uh, University of Hawaii technologies that are solving um, Hawaii problems today. Because I think the perception in, with many people is that uh, the University of Hawaii does all these esoteric research projects <laughs> and you know how does it affect me? Yeah. Well the projects that uh, Dennis are working on help the everyday person and they save money for Hawaii and they take care of one of our biggest problems which is how do we support the homeless people here in Hawaii? So what I'd like to do is uh, turn it over to uh, Dennis and first of all Dennis just give us a quick thumbnail of your background and uh, a little bit of uh, history on Real Green Power. Okay, so um, my background is uh, I've got 20 plus years as an architect and I um, really started focusing on environment, you know, really trying to solve environmental problems. Uh, and uh, I came to Hawaii um, with an idea of uh, trying to solve uh, water pollution that was coming out of ag. Um, and there was technology available at UH that was uh, sp specifically uh, treating dairy wastewater. Um, and so I sponsored some research at UH to uh, um, convert the uh, pollution in, in the agricultural wastewater from, uh, from, uh, from dairies and from sugar mills, mm -hmm. um, and specifically to uh, find a way to uh, generate some sort of economic benefit, which actually that methodology was through renewable energy. So anaerobic digestion produces methane, which can be used to pr produce uh, electric power. Okay. Yeah. So we don't want to just be a couple of talking heads here. So uh, Dennis brought some slides, which will help uh, yes. illustrate uh, his technology. So can we beam up the first uh, slide? Um, OK, there's the opening logo. and. Take it away, Dennis. All right. So uh, our first installation was actually taking brewery wastewater, which you can see in that lagoon there. It is a uh, that is actually coming straight out of a uh, out of a brewery in Northern California, um, and we digested that. Uh, I think you can advance the slide. No, he'll do it. Oh, right. So the uh, the outcome is both clean water, and so if you, there's an image on the bottom, you can see that there's uh, raw wastewater from the lagoon, it's that orange, and then sort of an e intermediate step, uh, and then the final step is that clear water on, on the right. And then um, coming out of the system is a constant stream of methane, which I you know, just took a picture of. Uh, normally, it's going into a water heater, so you couldn't see it. So I just, uh, you know, I ignited it. But the the blue flame um, that is actually indicative of a very clean gas. Um, so rather than, for instance, like landfill gas, you'll have a lot of uh, orange in it. Mm -hmm. um, the blue gas is actually a product of a very high carbon content, which then produces a very um, good, rich. Uh, yeah, fuel gas. Next. So what we did is we spent uh, three or four years uh, um, focusing on adapting that technology for treating domestic wastewater. And then uh, at uh, the uh, East Honolulu Wastewater Treatment Plant, uh, we were able to show that we could reduce the energy usage uh, in treating that wastewater by 50%, but more importantly, we could re reduce the amount of sludge, so the, the actual sewage solids that are produced through that um, processing, the normal sewage treatment processing, by 85%. Wow. So, um, so that led us to being able to um, uh, package this system in a way that uh, uh, we, we could actually put it 
close to habitation. because the main issue that you have is what do you do with the sewage solids and what you often have is either like an incinerator but more commonly you'll have like a sludge drying bed which is like a very smelly and you know flies are associated with and whatnot. but our the our process actually doesn't involve any sludge drying we actually produce such a small amount of sludge that we can just vacuum it out of our system and truck it away. So um, going back to the images, um, we are focused on um, the issue of homelessness as well as refugee camps um, and typically those, uh, um, well those uh, refugee camps and, and homeless camps are placed in, in areas that aren't served by electricity or water. So it or becomes right, yeah. right. Yeah. So um, it becomes an, uh, it becomes a very costly uh, situation in in just handling the amount of sewage that's involved, both in just like toilets, but also uh, from showers. Um, and uh, the city and county opened up a, a homeless facility on Sand Island. Uh, it was a couple of years ago. And, uh, and the homeless or the clients, uh, about 80 persons there plus some staff, uh, the costs that were um, that they were running up to handle the amount of wastewater that they were dealing with was costing about thirty thousand dollars a month. Um, and that homeless facility uh, was actually designed to serve 100, 120 people. So um, we got involved. We we um, contacted city and county and said that you know we think that we could uh, reduce the uh, costs uh, and provide actually superior um, facilities than what they were doing. So basically what they had were uh, you know the blue porta potties mm -hmm. um, and then uh, a trailer that uh, had showers in it and the, all of that was just hooked up to uh, essentially septic tanks and those septic tanks needed to be vacuumed out like every day. So um, our approach was to um, put an on-site wastewater treatment system that will allow us to um, irrigate uh, landscaping or even some crops uh, with that wastewater. So um, the, the upshot is, is that rather than uh, spending $30,000 a month, uh, we're our system uh, is costing them about five thousand dollars a month, wow, that's uh, and that's a big really, difference. you know, pretty much just the cost of, um, you know, overseeing and operating that system and, and just, you know, keeping an eye on it. Um, there's very little uh, that needs to be removed, so it's it's highly efficient, and yeah. the system itself runs um, uh, predominantly on solar energy. Um, one of the things that we don't have enough solar energy in what we installed in is actually to provide hot water. But interestingly enough, in Hawaii here, people aren't interested in a hot shower so much. And so we put water heaters in there and everybody was complaining that it was too hot. Oh. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of funny. Our, our, so if you can, uh, it, you know, it, uh, remove the energy that's used for hot water from the thing, our, entire system runs on essentially six solar panels for uh, eight bathrooms. Wow, so do you eight use the methane? Um, well, actually, our, our system, uh, we've tuned it act to, um, to avoid actually the production of methane. Uh, the, the methane itself becomes like a bit of a problem. And, and so this is actually, you know, part of the, the our improvements in the in the technology is, is that um, by avoiding methane, uh, you actually speed up the uh, the degradation of the of the wastes. And it's it's our, our system uses a combination of anaerobic digestion as well as aerobic direct uh, digestion. And the way that we've got it tuned. Uh, it, it avoids the bulk of the of the um, sludge that's produced from the aerobic pr uh, processing of sludge, which is the traditional activated sludge method. Right. 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 So um, so by reducing the amount of uh, uh, organics that are going into the um, essentially the activated sludge process, you really minimize the amount of sludge that's generated through that.
So. Wow. So do you have pictures of that? Uh, I don't or actually have. I'm afraid to ask too many questions because I'm not sure what's proprietary and or well, uh, so for the most part, it's in a, in a sealed tank. Yeah. So I could, you know, there's um, there's really th thankfully because you know using sealed tanks. Uh, eliminates the smell. Yeah. But um, yeah, so there's a lot of proprietary um, stuff inside okay. those tanks, and the and you know the, the system controls and whatnot, and the piping are all right, proprietary. Right. Right. Okay. So let's go to talk about I guess more logistical rather than the the engineering side of things. So you approached the city and said, hey, let's try this. Um, does it support the whole camp? Is it a small part of it? How long did it take to put it in? Um, well, um, so if you know, I'm sure you do know about like the procurement, right? Yeah, so it had yeah. to go through a request for proposals and competing. It, it, so it was, it was a competitive, uh, you know, selection process. Yeah, so yeah. we sort of opened the door, saying, "Hey, you know, there is a there is a better way." Um, and so we had to compete with, uh, for instance, like membrane technologies. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, other, you know, um, effective technologies, but uh, for the most part, um, you know, our approach was really geared towards uh, producing the most amount of, uh, of reusable water, um, eliminating the uh, complexities involved with, with, you know, handling the sludge and, uh, and then um, reducing the operating costs. And, yeah. uh, uh, so, as you probably know, that you know, membrane technologies take a lot of energy, mm -hmm. and uh, energy is expensive here in Hawaii. So it was a real leg up for us to just be able to essentially put a few solar panels on, yeah. on our system and just like let it fly. Yeah, excellent. Mm -hmm. Well, we need to take a quick break, but we'll be back in just a few, a few seconds here. So thank you, and come back to listen to the second half of our meeting with Dennis Furukawa. Um, co-hosted by Mitch Ewan on Real Green Power's projects and technologies developed at UH and benefiting our society, especially the homeless. Thanks. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Freedom. Is it a feeling? Is it a place? Is it an idea? At Dive Heart, we believe freedom is all of these and more, regardless of your ability. Dive Heart wants to help you escape the bonds of this world and defy gravity. Since 2001, Dive Heart has helped children, adults, and veterans of all abilities go where they have never gone before. Dive Heart has helped them transition to their new normal. Search DiveHeart.org and share our mission with others, and in the process, help people of all abilities imagine the possibilities in their lives. Hello, I'm Dave Stevens, host of the Cyber Underground. This is where we discuss everything that relates to computers that's just going to scare you out of your mind. So come join us every week here on thinktechhawaii.com, 1 p.m. on Friday afternoons. And then you can go see all our episodes on YouTube. Just look up the Cyber Underground on YouTube. All our shows will show up. And please follow us. We're always giving you current, relevant information to protect you, keeping you safe. Aloha. Okay, hey, welcome back to Hawaii, the state of clean energy. Today we're talking about wastewater treatment systems that are much more energy efficient and produce less solid waste as well. And we have Dennis Furukawa with Real Green Power and my co-host Mitch Ewan. So Mitch, um, I think we'd like to hear more about not only the project on Sand Island, but something else that may even be in the works. Well, first of all, I'm not sure that we show the beauty shots of what the inside of the air the toilet oh. compartments look like. Oh, so yeah. we have a couple okay. of slides to show you, you know, why these people thought this was like a really nice okay. deal. So, so pictures. Yeah, can we see a couple of those pictures, please? There we go. Dennis. Right. So it, you know, this indicates, you know, the the juxtaposition between a blue, you know, porta potty and uh, and a and a gang shower. So uh, what we're using there are very sleek, uh, you know, French-made macerating toilets, which uh, are able to, you know, push the sewage um, a pretty long distance into our, you know, sewage treatment process. And then uh, separately, we've got uh, the types of sinks with the faucets that are very high efficiency, low flow, um, and and a shower as well um, that uh, is metered flow. 
So um, we, we were actually able to reduce the amount of water that was being used from, I think it was 2,500 gallons a day down to about 700 or wow. something. Wow, that's significant. Yeah. Right, just by energy efficient, I mean, yeah, water well, efficient uh, uh, fixtures. Good, good. Right, so big, big differences. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So a heck of a difference between what you see on the screen now and what a porta potty looks like. I think everybody would agree with you that. You don't have a shot of that. Oh, okay. Exactly. Well. <laughs> now we don't. So what's the next slide? Here? Okay. Right. So you can see that at the uh, homeless uh, in, uh, encampment that everything is actually designed in shipping containers. Uh, so the, the image uh, images that you see, those are uh, so for every window that you see that re represents a, a um, discrete sleeping quarters. So everybody has their own um, door and key, uh, and um, and uh, down below you can see that uh, the it, this is actually something that was supported um, chiefly by uh, Mayor Caldwell. Uh, and, and the governor and uh, the, um, the uh, commissioners of the, uh, the county commissioners, uh, board of supervisors. Uh, and um, it's, a, it's a project that's run by um, the Institute for Human Services and the Department of Human Services at the uh, state, uh, county level and uh, state level, I'm sorry. Um, but uh, yeah. It was a uh, very well received, and um, uh, so the uh, really one of oh, and a little bit more. There's a, a shot of the electrical system that that powers the whole thing. So we've got um, essentially two lithium batteries, uh, a, uh, a charge controller, and some inverters. It's very simple. Um, it's actually still grid connected. So um, I think we're using about two hours of uh, electricity at night. Uh, wow. So yeah, yeah it's, it's well. Thank you for efficient. that. Seeing as how it's the Energy Wednesday show, it's always nice to get yeah. some, you know, we'll little en yeah. energy yeah. tech stuff. The next I mean, everything will show you is a lot related more to energy. energy. So, yes. Uh, so yes. how long has that uh, system been running in Santa Ana? Uh, it's been there since May. Okay. And uh, it's scheduled. I think that they've got a four-year. Uh, the contract with the with the state right oh, now. Oh, good, mm -hmm. good, yeah. Hey, what's the next slide? I think this is the Kenya project. Right. So uh, uh, this diagram here uh, is is really the focus of of where we see sustainability. This is a, a sustain, sustainability diagram, um, and. Uh, where we see real green power is at the center of that, at, at waste processing. Um, and on, on the, on the left-hand side that you see, there's farms. On the right-hand side, you see energy. The top, you see people. And the bottom, you see water. Um, so water is integral to both farming and energy. Uh, and obviously, those two things are what people can consume. Right. Um, and then so people generate waste, farms generate waste, energy production generates waste. Uh, so if, if we can actually recycle all of those wastes, put it back into the water part of that uh, e equation, um, we can achieve sustainability. And so that's really our goal. Uh, and I think if you... Yeah, next slide, please. Mm -hmm. So we're developing a project in central Oahu that... Uh, that it tries to achieve exactly that. So this is a project in central Oahu uh, that Should was the former. Should we look at the diagram on the left first, the yes. lower left? Yes. Maybe? So you can, if you can focus in on that. Um, so this was the former uh, Del Monte pineapple processing uh, camp, uh, and so it includes farm worker housing. Um, there is a in the center that it says WWTP. That's the sewage treatment plant. So wastewater treatment right. plant. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And uh, and there are businesses that are at this uh, this um, uh, property, and we're developing uh, greenhouses for hydroponics. Um, the greenhouses have have a, a component of solar energy product, uh, solar panels. Um, that provide a certain amount of shading 
uh, that uh, you know so we we um, we produce renewable energy that would be going into uh, both the uh, the grid mm -hmm. that you know that drives the uh, business and and you know agri agribusiness components uh, and we provide the space for farmers to produce food that um, are using you know that are relying largely on recycled water and uh, food processing you know agricultural um, food processing uses a tremendous amount of water. And it's actually one of the, um, one of the roadblocks to greater um, uh, compliance with food safety uh, here in Hawaii is actually a lack of access to sewage, you know, for, for wastewater processing uh, in the areas that, I mean, you know, we don't have sewage treatment plants right, all over right. the place, right? Yeah. So yeah. Um, the, uh, the idea here is that by providing the, the necessary infrastructure for um, both the farming as well as the value-added activities of, you know, uh, food processing, canning, you know, yeah. even you know, prepared foods, that um, we can create jobs uh, and uh, eliminate a lot of the waste. So, for instance, right, uh, the, every one of those food processing uh, facilities. Uh, generates uh, wastes that they can be do, going right, can be <laughs> yeah. going back into either producing uh, fodder for for animals like pigs or chickens, mm -hmm. um, and then that you know the wastewater gets cleaned up and then it can be recycled. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. this is a concept. How far along are you? We're actually for... under contract. Oh, in, it's yeah, a contract. So we, have, okay. we have land leases and we have power purchase agreements and Excellent. we have. Uh, yeah, subtenants, and yeah. So we're uh, right now we're um, preparing our uh, interconnection agreements and our uh, yeah our yeah. Um, uh, engineering, and uh, so we're we're on our way. Yeah. So, so this is a different um, structure. It's got the farm aspect and the food production and the the water and food and energy. energy. Food, energy, all, and water. Yeah, yeah, all connected. Right, exactly. And the other thing is it's dual use of the land. Like when people mm -hmm. put out these uh, ground-mounted solar arrays, that's it. I mean, you can't do anything else with that land. Okay, and land cheap. is, <laughs> yeah, well, and land is know, very uh, precious yeah. here in yeah. Hawaii if we want to become self-sufficient in our food. So by, you Putting know. The solar above the greenhouse? There you go. Yeah. Yeah. That's dual use technology in the, the best possible form, so. Yeah, so when do you think I, I mean, a project like this is probably one that will go through a lot of growth and con continue and change and develop for many years. But when do you think most of this will be in place? We're really shooting for um, having tenants in place and power generating, you know, by the end of next year. So. Really? Mm -hmm. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, do you have? Well, we're currently actually right now making the um, the necessary. Uh, modifications to the wastewater treatment plant that's really the first step so yeah. we're we're doing that right now so do you have as um, mitch had said in the previous one beauty shots of of any of the oh n n well uh, really nothing that we can okay. share i okay. can show you okay. like the inside of the wastewater treatment plant but that's not very beautiful <laughs> right so depends on what you yeah. okay there's mm -hmm. i guess there's one more graphic uh, one more diagram. Uh, so there we go. Well, this is actually getting down into the you know the nitty gritty of, of really what's going on with uh, with that um, with that sustainability di diagram. So uh, it, it involves agriculture, essentially agricultural activities on the bottom, people on the top, uh, and and more industrial activities around uh, on the sides with wastewater treatment right in the center uh, and uh, if if you do um, what's known as a mass balance for all you you know scientists and engineers out there um, what we're trying to do is we're trying to minimize the loss of any mass um, and by by creating you know value from from wastes and, and recycled uh, yeah. aspects and and the energy balance uh, really goes hand in hand with that mass balance yeah so, mm -hmm. yeah 
This, um, this is really very interesting, and I, I wish you a lot of mm. success. Oh. And, um, a I, little, would, yeah. I, I would like to actually give a, a shout out, you know, to that this was, um, this was really developed uh, with partners at HNEI at yeah. the university, um, and we got a lot of support from uh, Sultan Ventures and Accelerate UH. Oh, good. Um, and they really provided sort of the background for us to be uh, you know, focused on both the modular uh, toilet uh, systems, uh, but really. Ba the, really the basic science. Yeah. The, uh, so is anybody writing up the description of this or if somebody, for example, we have a bunch of students who are doing a robotics program. The Lego League topic is into orbit, talking about living in space. And when you talk about a self-contained system and mass balance and being very aware of how everything works together, they might be interested in learning more. Is that available on your website or at HNEI or even the diagrams here, um, are those available elsewhere or do they get them from this show? Um, I think you could take a look at our website, okay. uh, so www.realgreenpower.com. Um, but in terms of, you know, uh, sort of takeaways, uh, you know, okay. curriculum, you know, no, we actually haven't pr yeah. produced Well, it's that a middle bit. school um, program, so there's probably, it's, it's just about right at that level of detail. It's concepts. You know, being excited about using our resources wisely and excited about technology contributing to solutions. Right. Yeah. So Some I think we're, we're going to need to wrap it up really quickly. Do you have a last uh, thing you'd like to leave with our yeah. listeners? Well, uh, you know, I think that... Um, I think that we all need to be uh, really focused on, you know, our reliance on imported energy and food. Mm -hmm. uh, and in particular, you know, that that has a real big um, carbon footprint. Yeah. And uh, and that's why I think we're, you know, pr focused in on the sustainability. It, it really can make a big, big difference in terms of, you know, uh, global warming and, yeah. and especially more, more importantly just you know food safety we yeah. need to achieve you know security so okay. we have time we'll oh. on to, are we yes good? so and last word mitch uh, i just also like to acknowledge that uh, the support we got from uh licensing from the office of technology development and economic development i think they changed the name but oted has been very very helpful very yeah. easy to work with they've been very supportive of this project so once again, getting UH technology out there into the marketplace to support our citizens yeah. and solve their problems. Yeah. And, that's what, and that's what, you know, UH is, has not really, um, I don't want to say they haven't uh, advertised that a lot, but that's, this project is, is one of those projects where UH technology has relevance today to the community. I agree. Yeah, definitely. Totally. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. It's a pleasure. Thanks. Thank you, Maria. Thanks, Mitch. Okay. Yeah. Aloha. And thank you for watching Think Tech Hawaii.